Good morning, Cynthia. Hello again. And Did almost good afternoon. My message I sent you. I know. <laughs> I well, we, so that's something we've actually talked about in dev chat. The, the question you asked, not the one you wanted answered, but the one you asked, is one we've actually done in in um, we've we've talked about in um, dev chat. And I put the ticket that I used to do. Um, talk about it and then I have a um, naming conventions or yeah I have a bunch of stuff on that that question I didn't want to jump in there kind of it was too much yeah. to talk about yeah and it was like Anyways. a session Amy hopped off <laughs> yeah and I wanted to go too <laughs> so I'm um, moderating the the um, session and I'll let everyone in like closer to noon. Oh, you can let them in. It, yes. I it's mean, okay. I was just yeah. going to ask you if I uh, just let everyone in. And... Yeah. I'm trying something new. I'm trying a video already. I'm not sure if I like the video, but you know, it's camp. It's camp. I know. <laughs> okay. Right, you can I let the admit... folks in. And I'm going to um, share my screen from a different computer. Just a minute. I can probably let myself in, but there it is. That's awesome, Joanne. <laughs> I love your screen. Thanks. Oh, yes. <laughs> My aunt is a total frog fanatic. She she loves frogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really like frogs, but I just love the idea of this frog. Just chilling. <laughs> oh, I'm not ready to share yet. Stop share. Actually. You're also sharing your entire desktop. Um, so if it helps, you can just share the browser there. Oh, there you go. There we go. I guess I can just leave that up. Oh, wait, I need to share, make sure we can hear it. Um, where is the share screen? Oh, here it is. It's one of the things I miss about camp is having lunch together and just you know, more of that. Oh, hey. I know. Let's see. There. Hi, Tori. Thanks for joining us. There. So just a heads up on our uh, on the um, pages on in the website, they they should have for, uh, feedback forms. Feel free to give me a feedback on this. I am trying it out, things a little differently. I've seen this done before. I tried to record this in advance, kind of to relieve some of the stress on my part and make and have fewer sharing issues and all that sort of stuff. We'll see how it goes. I realize that talking to myself is not not as exciting as talking to other people. So that was that was a um, that's a lesson I just I learned on this. I'm going to play just a little bit of this to make sure that you can hear the sound. In 1860, yep, yeah, we can hear the sound. Okay.
Well, any any observations from your first session or first se your your first sessions today? Anyone? Oh, I really appreciated. I went to the accessible media session right before this one, and I really appreciated how well uh, I forget her the speaker's name, but. I liked how she broke it down into six different types of images and walked through all of them because Carol knows we've been talking about images over the last few days. And I'm like, oh, thank you so much for covering each type. Yeah, it's um, images are alt text for images is not trivial. You can't just set it and leave it. Do you want to another minute, Carol? I know you just yeah. Let's give it one more minute. Twenty minute session. Yes. So I have a ten minute little presentation I put together. It's something I have found really interesting. And I thought I'd just talk about it. And then, uh, so it's a 10 minute video. I am trying the video approach because, you know, what the heck, uh, it, it would, would make things a little easier for me so that I can concentrate more on the session itself. And I'd love your feedback. And uh, so it's gonna be 10 minutes. So we should have 10 minutes after, at least five minutes afterwards to talk about any observations or any thoughts. And yes, it's camp. So Cynthia, did you have anything you wanted to add as moderator? Um, just that I'll be following the chat. So if anyone has any questions, I can just poke Carol. But I also want to introduce Carol, who's a coworker of mine on Stanford Web Services, has been doing, who's also been working to help put the camp together this year. So thank you, Carol, for that. Um, but I don't want to take up too much time, so take it away, Carol. I do want to put a plug for the camp. Camp was one of the reasons I got my job at Stanford. So I, I feel very, um, uh, uh, what's that word, um, committed to it. That's not the word I'm looking for, but we'll call, go with that. So in this video, I, I try and talk about what a history of accessibility and it, just some interesting things that tied together to me. And so I'm gonna just a minute, I'm gonna hit play. But um, it was a, yeah, give me uh, your feedback at the end. In 1867, Martin Oates was arrested and taken into custody in San Francisco. What was his offense? He was ugly. As a Union soldier, he had been stricken by paralysis, leaving, and leaving him, quote, a perfect wreck. Martin Oates was the first person to be subject to a new unsightly beggar ordinance in San Francisco. This is also named an ugly law. Hi there, I am Carol Westerberg. I am I, I work with Stanford Web Services. I do front end development and assist with accessibility issues. And I recently received my certification, cert, certified professional in accessibility core competencies. In this presentation, I want to examine the history of society's views on disabilities. So in this slide, you see a picture of, of a book. It's called The Ugly Laws, and it was written by Susan M. Schweik in 2009. And there's a quote on the front that says, any person who is an unsightly or disgusting object shall not therein expose himself to public view under the penalty of a fine of $1. This type of law started in San Francisco and it was soon adopted by other cities such as San Francisco. Chicago, Denver, Portland, and outside the United States and Manila, Philippines. These ugly laws criminalized disabilities, denied people with disabilities of their human rights, basically treated them as objects. In this slide, you see of the picture of the Christian Bible in a paraphrased quote from Leviticus 21, 16 to 23. 
and it's paraphrased, and it says, a man blind or lame who has a marred face or any limb too long, a man who has a broken foot or a broken hand, or is a hunchback or a dwarf, or a man who has a defect in his eye or eczema or a scab or is a eunuch, he shall not approach the altar because he has a defect, lest he profane my sanctuaries. Laws against disabled people didn't start in 1867 with, the, with San Francisco. They have been part of our culture for a very long time. This text in culture, sorry, this text in Leviticus dates back to about 300 BCE. So the bar Bible portrays a disability as a curse and a punishment. In fact, people with disabilities have a higher rate of poverty and are less healthy than the general population. It's been noted the effects of disabilities are lower rates of education, lower rates of employment, greater rates of health issues such as smoking, diabetes, and obesity, and greater rates of poverty. So in the 1800s, society's answer at this time was to put disabled people in institutions. In this picture on the slide, you see a line of beds with children lying in them. It's from the Crip Institution. Now, according to the National Park Service, these facilities were often overcrowded and dirty, were unregulated. Men and women lived in the same space with little oversight. Living in, in such an institution was involuntary. And it's when families couldn't cope with their insane or physically disabled family members, these individuals became wards of the state. As late as 1967, uh, researcher Froelich found that there's about a half a million severely disabled people who are long-term residents of, med of these kinds of institutions. So people with disabilities have often be th been thought of as objects needing charity, medical treatment, and social protection. We can see this no more clearly as with the Jerry Lewis Telethon for Muscular Dystrophy. This fundraiser used to air every Labor Day, and it raised millions of dollars for disabled people. However, these same disabled people protested the telethon. Why was that? The telethon portrayed people as objects for charity. On this slide, you see a quote from a frustrated Jerry Lewis saying, pity, you don't want to be pitied because you're a cripple in a wheelchair. Stay in your house. And there's a picture with a man sitting in a wheelchair and a sign that reads, don't believe the lies of the telethon. James Cherry was a law student, and he wrote with a, a law student with a disability. And he wrote, in 1970, we had no right to education, to employment, to transportation, to housing, or to voting. There were no civil, right law, civil rights laws for us, no federal advocacy grants. A few people looked beyond our medical needs. So before 1970, having a disability was viewed as having a medical problem in a charity case. Around 1970, a shift in thinking began to take place. Rather than thinking of disabilities as a medical or charity problem, people began to thinking of disabilities as a social problem. That is, society needs to remove the barriers that keep people from, with disabilities from participating in society. So in the slide, you see a picture of people sitting in wheelchairs in front of a bus. And they are protesting the lack of transportation for disabled people. So in around 1973, the Rehabilitation Act made it illegal for federal agencies or institutions that receive federal funding to discriminate against anyone solely on the basis of a disability. It addressed areas of transportation, education, and hiring. This step was one of the steps that removed some of the barriers, but there are more. So in 1990, the Americans for Disabilities Act was up for a vote in Congress. 
and it was struggling to get approval. And so on March 13, 1990, over a thousand people marched from the White House to the U.S. Capitol and demanded that Congress pass the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA. You can see in this picture, when they got to the U.S. Capitol, about 60 of them climbed out of their wheelchairs and crawled up the Capitol steps. This Capitol crawl was a physical demonstration of how inaccessible architecture impacts people with disabilities. The Capitol crawl highlighted the urgency behind the need to pass the ADA. And you can see in this picture that in, on July 26, 1990, George H.W. Bush signed it into law. Now, where the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 addressed federal funding, the ADA addresses public funding or public organizations. Moving on to the UN, in 2006, the UN Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities demonstrated a change in attitudes and approaches with disabilities. It signals on a worldwide scale that persons with disabilities should not be considered objects, but instead subjects with rights who are capable of making decisions for their lives based on their free and informed consent, as well as being members of society. In this picture from the UN, you can see a person in the wheelchair participating in an assembly. Throughout history, people with disabilities have struggled with having the same rights and freedoms as non-disabled people. We've seen the progression. Society views these people going from objects to subjects. Far from the ugly laws of the 1890s and 1900s, this picture shows a blending of both disabled and non-disabled people. The struggle for the rights of people with disabilities mirrors other struggles for civil rights. We see, so as at this time, I'd like to recognize and honor the struggles of both the women, the black, the brown, and the LGBTQ. I also recognize and honor the struggles of the disabled. We have seen there is a long history of people with disabilities being regulated to the back door, both in the literal sense and the metaphorical sense. Restaurants with stairs leading up the front door are not wheelchair accessible. So they post signs telling wheelchair users they need to go through the back door. Not being able to use the front door is inconvenient and stigmatizing. And I'm sure wheelchair users would much rather use the front door like everybody else. So as we build our buildings, our applications, and our websites, let's keep in mind the changes and agents that we make to remove these barriers will make things accessible for all people. These changes allow someone with disabilities to participate on an equal footing with someone else. And, that, and the big change from where we were in 1867. Thank you for your time. Okay, that was kind of heavy. <laughs> um, so I was wondering if anybody had any comments or thoughts they wanted to share about this. I mean, it is camp. Cynthia, you always have something to say. I do. Um... Yeah, that, that's that's a lot of info that I had I was just not aware of. So I guess that's what that's you know huge because we do a lot of things um, because it's the law because you know we're we're trying to be inclusive and that's like the big thing now inclusivity and equity and um, but knowing the history behind that really really um, uh, it helps you know to know where we, we've come from we've definitely go, come a long way right. Um, but there's lots more to do. So thank you for that. That was very, very informative. Yeah, what I think what really strikes me is that all of a sudden we're going in, in a time period where people with 
um, particularly some severe disabilities can still participate and, and have really, really contribute, you know, uh, and not be stuck in, you know, a corner or an institution or something like that. So to me, it, it, it's a, this, uh, this, this disabilities are, a, or the making things accessible, I should say, is super important. Okay, well, if uh, anybody else had any, any other comments, Joe, you wanna pipe in? If you had any thoughts, you don't have to. Okay. No pressure. No pressure, it's <laughs> camp. <laughs> and what did you think about my recording that in advance? You think that worked okay? I. Yeah, it, it was great. And then you had uh, the transcript at the same time so you could read your words. Um, I like the imagery you chose and, and the quotes and things. Good. Okay. That's, that's the first time I've seen something like that because you're here at the same time so I can I still see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I saw this in another camp where they had uh, the presentation and then they brought the person live. And so I kind of like that. Ishii. Yeah, Carol, I, what was great is it allowed me to process it in my own pace, in my own way. Uh, I think it was really beautiful, especially uh, thinking about what the subject matter was. Uh, I think usually when a presenter is talking, I'm more looking at the presentation and what they're talking about from the presenter's perspective. And so this, because I was kind of passively watching, I could look at it from my own, own perspective. It was very nice and beautifully done. Oh, good. Yeah, I, I, it's on YouTube right now. I'll, um, I'll put the, I have it just as a private link because I didn't know how this would go off. But um, I can put the um, link on the page in, um, on, on, the, on webcam. And it's, it's open to anybody to look at. Joe's raising his hand. Oh, Joe. Yeah, sorry, I'm not, I'm not on my regular computer. So I had to plug in my headset and I don't have a video or a web, webcam on this one. Um, yeah, I thought it was great, really informative, tons of stuff I had no idea about. Um, so, and you know, I'd heard of some of the acts and stuff but I didn't know when or why really um, they came about. So, um, and then I agree with Ishii. Um, having it as kind of a documentary style without your face and your having you in front of us giving the presentation actually kind of brought me into the story and the narrative as a whole um, as just one cohesive thing. So that oh, was really, really nice. That's a good point. Thank you. Okay, yeah, I'll put the, the link up on, on um, on the uh, webcam page for the YouTube video. And, um, oh, Sarah, Sally, thank you. Do you want to say something, Sally? Go ahead and unmute. Sure. Oh, um, hi, sorry, I'm not having a great hair day. Um, That's okay. <laughs> where's, oh, I did start, there we are. Hi, everyone. I've been studying accessibility since last August. And the people in this space are just so incredibly gracious and kind and sharing. I come from the digital marketing world where it's very competitive. And um, I wrote the sponsor blogs for WordPress Accessibility Day. And now I'm on the organizing team for um, our camp coming up July. I think it's, uh, we had to change the date because WordCamp Europe moved into our time frame in June. <laughs> So it's going to be the 16th and 17th of July, and we'll have a dedicated accessibility track. And we're just about probably next week going to open the call for volunteers, more organizers and speakers. So um, if you guys want to keep um, word up for that, do you guys know Sumner Davenport? Are you familiar with her? Okay, so she's been in the accessibility space for about 30 years. And like, she's been my mentor, and I'm learning so much from her. And she's like our lead. And um, so I'm really, really, really excited for this. And thank you, this, this was great. I'm like a sponge and learning as much as I can about accessibility, so. 
Are you get, are you working for your certification? Yes. Well, I'm about to start all my DQ um, um, courses next month. I want to specialize. Oh, hold on one second. So, sorry. Yesterday in the mail, I got this from Axe.com. I want it that all their speakers were wearing. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I'm starting that. I want to specialize in content, and um, so um, I'll be getting certified in that and eventually take my IAP. But that's going to take a year because you have to have a lot of experience before you can take that. Yeah, I just I just received the um, CPACC which <gasps> um, last month. Congratulations! Thank you. That's I'm, I'm awesome. Super pleased. I'm working on the WAS now. Okay. That's wonderful. So thank you for this. This was great. I've been at so many work camps. I've never seen anything like this. Oh, really? Yeah. So thank you. Especially as someone was saying, accessibility is like becoming, it's been on my heart for a couple of years. And I asked people about it, developers that I work with, and they said it wasn't important, but it always just stuck in my heart. And last year with everything shutting down, it gave me an opportunity to start learning. And it's just been an amazing journey so far. Nice. Well, give me the information on the uh, ward camp. And um, oh. I, I do yeah. have um, some uh, some um, uh, vacation scheduled in, in July, but oh. um, I can, I, you can, I mean, I have the video. You can always use that. Well, we're also going to pre-record to help with any conflicts for anyone that's interested. So um, I think that's going to, I think it's going to open next week. You guys keep talking. I'm going to look for the link to put in chat. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Also, just want to put a plug in for the next sessions at 1230, where uh, Jetian is, is part of our um, online accessibility program. And she's going to be highlighting a tool that Stanford will be using called Site Improve um, to test out uh, websites and I don't know what else. <laughs> so that's at 1230. And we can all have lunch, turn off our screens and have lunch in the background if you want. That's right. <laughs> Um, actually, Sally, if you want to um, email me, uh, I'll put my um, information on the um, the on the our, my um, session page. Thank you. That would be great. Um, I'm trying to get into my Slack to get the. Uh, you know what? I'll just put my. Uh, I'm C J W E S T. C J W E S T. C J West. Uh, oh, got yeah. Okay at stanford.edu. Okay. And I'll just send it to you from my sallythune at gmail.com. Okay. Yeah, That's good. thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I look forward to seeing you all at other sessions and check out Jatian next. Can I ask you a question, Carol? Yes. Do you have, um, from your learning and everything, do you have uh, any thoughts or opinion on white space? White and space is calming. It's calming. <laughs> I know yeah. a lot of um, that's sort of like the a little friction point as we move into, you know, a lot more white space. <laughs> and people are like, it's just too much. We have to scroll and scroll and scroll. And uh, and trying to get people to understand the um, that it is calming, right? So I didn't know if you had any. Um, I bet Ishi could tell you more. <laughs> I've heard from Ishi, yeah. <laughs> I think the other one, Carol, I think you mentioned it. It's, um, gosh, I forgot which one it was. Uh, but not just calming, but people with uh, mental disabilities, when, when, they, when it's too busy, uh, they get overwhelmed or uh, it's like the busy animation thing. I think we can look at words and imagery in the same way. Uh, if we overwhelm them, one, I think uh, it, they can't comprehend the information as, as uh, what's the right word? I don't know what I'm saying, but- It makes it easier to process one thing at a thank time. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. There you go. Much better put. 
process the information. There we go. Good users with yeah, it's, it's, ADHD and anxiety. Tori says, good for users with ADHD. Yeah, you, you read it. ADHD and anxiety. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally heard um, yesterday, uh, I put something on their page and they said, oh, um, uh, they didn't notice it or it wasn't prominent enough because it was below the fold. And I was like, wow, people are still using that below the fold. <laughs> I was surprised. Some of those things that that carry on. All right, I should hop off. I'm going to go set up and get ready for the next session. Maybe we'll see some folks over there. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you.